<laughs> What's the matter, Houston? I need, I need, <laughs> need extra hand? Yeah. I looked over and I said, uh, Houston, where's your bobber? And his, his rod just doubled over about that time. But uh, I don't mind eating one every now and then. Oh. Uh. What's up guys, it's Daniel and Houston from Arms Family Homestead. And as you can see, we are out bright and early. We're, we're up with the chickens, I guess you'd say. Uh, probably the earliest we've been in the creek in a long time. But we need to get some bait because we're gonna do a live bait challenge. We're gonna go bass fishing in our pond with some live bait. Yes. Now the other day we went down to the dock with some live bait that we caught out of the creek. Caught a ton of fish, caught some catfish. We actually didn't catch a ton. We caught some catfish and uh, had a quite a really good day the day before but anyways today Houston's gonna throw the cast out a little bit we've got a, a minnow trap or two set out we're gonna get some bait and do some bass fishing at the pond yes sir what are you doing out bright and early this morning Gemma hmm? hey you know you're getting awful gray haired gray headed around your face your nose all right broski get us some bait We'll call that a practice throw, right? Yeah, I got it on the rocks. So. Yeah, you need to throw it over here where there's less rocks. You just threw it right in the crawdad hole over there in all the big rocks. You're gonna have to rescue it because now you caught a you caught some giant rocks. Nothing. Well no. <laughs> caught a giant rock. That's all you caught that time. That was a practice throw. You so what we'll say is you were spooking all the little bluegill from the rocks over into the good yeah. good yeah. spot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what I would say. You got one. No, you got two. Come here. Hey, 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 hey. Quit running away from me. It's a long ear. There's a bluegill in that one, looks like. All out. Oh, buddy. Dad. We got one escapee. Go get a bunch more. There's more where that came from. That's all it takes right there. That was a good throw. Woo! Big bluegill. Got some bigger bluegill that time. Now, how are they? Hey, whoa, 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 whoa! Are they going up there? <clears throat> Heck, come. They ain't headed to the water today, you know what? How now, that in one. the world is he getting stuck? Well, it's because all of his fins and everything. But uh, that one may be a little bit big for what we're wanting to do this morning. Now, I'm not saying we don't have bass that couldn't eat it, but that one might have to sit out there a while. He is definitely stuck. There he is. Hey, buddy, see ya. So while Houston's uh, tossing the net over there getting bait, I'm going to check this trap. We set this, we baited it out yesterday evening before supper. Actually, Baited it out and let it set a few times, a few minutes, and got our bait out. So, we got uh, a bunch of little small bluegill. Those will be perfect. Those are all perfect bait size for bass fishing today. Some nice ones in there. Perfect. Literally. Yeah, these right here are what we're after for sure. Perfect size bait for, for bass fishing in our pond. Man, I almost feel guilty using a such a pretty fish as bait, but it is what it is today. They're legal. Alrighty, we have got a bucket full of bait and some bonus crawfish in there. I caught, me and Houston caught some crawdads yesterday evening. And uh, so crawdads and a little sunfish headed to the pond.
pond is looking fresh this morning, isn't it? Yep. So we're going to take the little mini pontoon boat out, throw out some lines, and see if we can catch a big bass this morning. Ooh, that's wet. <laughs> Don't leave without me. Coming aboard, Captain. Oh, yeah. I see what you're talking about. My seat's soaking wet, too. A little dew last night. I have to lower the trolling motor down. I've had it set on aerator mode. I have to set it down a little deeper. Man, I love this pond. So we're not going to get too fancy with it this morning. It's, uh, it's about 6.30 a.m., Trying to get out here before the sun gets up over the trees and gets it too hot out here for us. But uh, we only have a couple hours to fish. We've got a couple softball games to go to in a little while. So like I said, we're gonna do a little live bait fish and we're just gonna kind of take the boat out here into the middle of the pond and uh, tie off to one of these trees. Toss some bluegill out under a bobber and see if we can get a big bass to bite. We'll just clamp onto this tree. Right, that'll work. Nothing fancy. Just so that we tie off out there. All right, Houston. We're just gonna toss our rods out in different places. Houston also brought his uh, extra rod with a whopper plopper because you know you can't miss out on that. Nope. And get you a little, a little bluegill. Whoop, whoop. That's actually a long ear, but still. So we're just gonna hook them right under that back fin, okay? All right. There you go. Push them out that way. A little sunfish under a bobber ought to get a big bass fired up this morning. It that way a little bit. Well, I'd say put it over there around them big trees somewhere. Whoops. That wasn't a ticket. That was chasing bait. Threw it right in front yeah, of Hey, me. you're going to have to keep him out of your bobber line. You got a lot going on here, buddy. I got two, uh, two bluegill out on bobbers. Right. And Houston's throwing his whopper plopper. He catches the first bass. I think he's tangled up in his other line. Yep. Faux show. Got a lot going on to be fishing with them treble hooks, buddy. You're going to have to get him up here. You got a mess now. <laughs> Flip him back here. I'm trying to. All right. Nice bass on a whopper plopper. But uh, nice uh, we, got a, we got a lot going on here to be topwater fishing, too. You know what? Yeah. All right. I'll let Houston deal with his fishing rod problems up there but first fish of the day on the yep. the whopper plopper not on the bluegill but he looks kind of muscly kind of he looks kind of muscly yeah <laughs> steve's telling everybody good morning i don't know if you can hear him in the distance uh, <laughs> what's the matter houston i need i need <laughs> need an extra hand yeah i looked over i said uh houston where's your bobber and his his rod just doubled over about that time First bass on a bluegill. What'd you catch? What is it? Well, we know it's a bass, right? Probably. That was quick. Hey, not a giant, but we'll take him. We got a lot going on here. Houston's Houston's fishing with two rods. He's got, oh my goodness. Here, here, here. This is a big guy. Is he it? He thinks he's big. He thinks he's big. You got a big attitude. But Houston's fishing with two rods. He's got a bluegill pole and his whopper plopper. Now that's what's in my lap. I've got a rod out this side of the boat with a bluegill under a bobber and another bobber out over there with a crawdad under it. Let's, uh, this is chaos. This is. But it's fun, right? Yeah. All right, then. It's fun chaos. This guy's actually going on the stringer because we're planning on keeping just a few fish today. 
because we did our fish survey on the pond. Uh, one of the things Pond King told us was to keep up with the bass harvest. Usually we don't keep many bass out of this pond, but they told us we needed to keep about uh, 15 pounds of bass per year, remove them. And uh, so today, catch, clean, and cook. If we get about three or four, I'm thinking maybe some, some blackened bass fillets on the griddle. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But we got to catch a few more first. All right, Mr. Bluegill, go do your job. I think I got something on the little rod. Oh, fish feeder's going off. I definitely got something on the little rod on the crawdad. Oh, dang. It broke off right, I mean, 10 feet from the boat. Dang it. Fish feeder went off though. The bluegill are only gonna be feeding over there. All right, I'm retied. We're gonna try another crawdad. He's trying to pinch me. Did you see that? Yeah. Just gonna hook him through the end of the tail. I don't have any weight on there or anything. Ow, golly, he pinched me right on the finger. Gotta fix my bobber real quick. I'm gonna send him out there and see if we can trade him in for a tasty bass. Back on the top water game, huh? Yeah. Got one. Got one on the little runt rod here. <laughs> well, gosh, I just watched him pop off. He was yeah, wrapped around a one little limb out there in the water. Dad, that one looks like a look blue, at this. Like a bluegill. Look at this. What's Broke my braided line again. That's twice on the same rod, 10 pound, I think it's 10 pound braid, but I mean, we're not fighting a fish that's very big at all. And uh, that's twice I broke off on a little small rod on a crawdad. Let's try again. All right, well, maybe third time's a charm. We're going to try another try another crawdad on the, the little ultralight because it seems to be what's getting the bites. Uh, I got a bluegill out swimming around over there and one behind the boat. And that one's getting after it. He's really doing his job well. But so far, we've only got one bass on a bluegill. Got one? Or is he hung up? Yeah. We're, we're running into some technical difficulties trying to live bait fish on a moving boat. You know what? Yeah. We sit here and we watch this bobber, and I told Houston, something's after it, something's after it, something's after it. And then what happened? Something went after it. <laughs> the bobber went, Foom! Yeah. And it's wrapped around a log, a limb, a stick, a branch, kind of like this one right here behind the boat. Oh, he come loose. He was wrapped around a branch. Now we got to go get that one unhung. The story of the day is We're not having luck. a moving boat and moving bait in a pond full of trees. Do not work well. Is not working out great. Well, Houston's hooked up on the whopper plopper. Maybe the only way we catch fish today. Oh, that's a nice one. I would have thought the uh, the live bait would have been the ticket, but apparently I was wrong. Mm. That's a really nice bass, Houston. That's a that's about like the first one you caught. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. You're fixing to get a treble hook in your hand. Whoa. Do not leave that rod under tension like that, holding all those treble hooks, okay? You will definitely get a treble hook in your hand. If that, hey, listen, if that hook slips out with that rod under tension. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. I barely had him hooked on the top of the mouth. Well tell you what 
we didn't keep that first bass because I was planning on just uh, keeping a few like 12 inches, 12 inch bass or something. But uh, we're kind of running out of time. It's uh, 8.15 and I told mom we try to be back at the house by about 8.30. Okay. I know this doesn't sound right, but we have a lot of big bass here. Yeah. I think we should just keep two or three. Two or three. Two or three. Well, that was a little bigger than what I'd planned on keeping. But we've only got one on the stringer because we turned the first bigger one loose this morning. So maybe even the next 15 minutes you can catch another one. It's going to take at least, we need at least three bass to do our catch, clean, and cook, so I feel like. Let this one go or whoa, whoa, whoa. It don't hurt anything. We'll, we'll keep him for now. And then if we don't have enough on the stringer, we'll go ahead and keep him on before we leave. Right. I got lines out everywhere. I, this is This boat's really not big enough for what we're doing it almost just fell off of and uh we got we're going too many different directions here but all right stringer him put him on the, no 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 just go right through poke a hole right through his mouth right there mm -hmm. right there right there yeah we don't we don't typically keep too many bass string run him down the stringer but uh i don't mind eating one every now and then oh uh. Where's my stringer with my bass? Your bass. <laughs> Houston, <laughs> you're not talking. What happened? Hey, turn around, look at me. It was an accident. You're just fine. Um, so we're not eating those two bass. And they're both on a stringer somewhere in the pond now. Um, I can't see my green bobber. I can't see. Him. Look, 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 look. It may just be hung up. Yeah, it was just tangled on something. Well, so much for that idea. Houston lost our stringer. And uh, we were running out of time. And I was like, we just needed three, three or four bass. And I'm literally, I, I was reeling my crawfish in. Look at this. This bass hit this crawdad as I was picking it up with the boat. Look at here. This would have been number three for the stringer. We'd have kept him. Um, but I guess since we don't have a stringer anymore, and uh, this is only the, the only bass we've got, we probably won't be keeping. So um, maybe, just maybe. Uh, the second bass that Houston just put on the stringer will get off. The first one, he's kind of doomed with that stringer in his mouth because it's the way it's looped. But it would be kind of interesting if uh, we come over here and later in the summer and caught a bass with a stringer in his mouth, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, so much for the bass catch, clean, and cook. We're just fishing for fun today, I guess. Oh, well. It is what it is. <laughs> well we don't have much time left this morning to fish and uh the way i just caught that that bass I, I was literally just reeling the rod in so we could move and that bass nailed it with about eight ten feet of line out something like that and the same thing happened to houston earlier on the little rod he was reeling one in and the, and a bass just almost yanked the rod out of his hand so for the last couple of minutes that we're going to fish here, we're going to just kind of work a crawdad under a bobber. It's totally a weird way of fishing with under a bobber. But when we've been learned something by accident, you know, you just keep trying it. Uh oh, move him a little bit. I said, uh oh, because it looked like something was after him. My bobber was flickering. Well, some days, some things don't go as planned, <laughs> and some days, nothing goes as planned. I, I really thought we'd come over here with those tiny little bluegill and just tear the bass up, 
that wasn't the case. I think we caught one fish on a bluegill. Houston caught two bass. Two bass on, the on a whopper plopper. And we lost several on crawdads and caught two on a crawdad. And somehow we managed to lose the whole stringer with fish on it. We would have had just enough fish for a nice catch, clean, and cook. I was thinking like blackened bass fillets on the griddle on a bed of rice. I think, oh, it would have been so good. It would have been so good. <laughs> we'll try that again later. Um, you know, it, it is what it is. You know, Houston was worried I was going to be really mad at him about dropping that stringer. And uh, it is frustrating. I'm not going to lie. But accidents happen. I'm not mad at you. It wasn't on purpose. The fish flopped and the stringer left. And uh, I'm not going to say it's never happened to me before. I've lost entire stringers full of fish. Like with 10, 12, 15 fish on it. <laughs> and uh, it happens. Tough break today. Um, you know, some people would say a, a bad day of fishing is better than a good day at work. Well, today... <laughs> It was not a bad day of fishing, but it was like, can't catch a break. Nothing is going to go right. Nothing will work out, but that's just the joy of what we do. It's just fun. I don't, I enjoyed every minute of it. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else than right out here catching fish in our pond with you. And it just Same. is what it is. I hope um, those two bass like each other now. I hope they like each other because they are, they are tied together. Yes. Literally. Literally. Yeah. So, oh well, it is what it is. No reason to get mad. We'll come back and we'll try it again next time, right? Yeah. So I say we go home, probably clean the, the fish smell off of us. Yeah. And load up and go watch Emily play softball. Yeah. So, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And as always, we'll see you on the next video. Peace. Mm -hmm.